All right, hello, wine drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday. And um, this is one of our events we've had. I haven't had time to review many of the events we've done this month because uh, we've had four or five a week. But uh, it was nice to have Jonathan Nagy. Nagy? Nagy, I think is how it was pronounced. And uh, he uh, is a winemaker for Byron Vineyards, a winer that we know very well here at the Wine Watch. We've had a lot of their Chardonnay Reserve that they don't make anymore in our gift boxes in years gone past. And this is a winery that, uh, one of the most important wineries in uh, the Santa Barbara County, Santa Maria Valley. They um, go back all the way to the early 80s. Well, Ken Byron Brown started in 1978 at Zaca Mesa Winery. I always like to call it the School of Zaca Mesa because a lot of great winemakers, Jim Clendenin, uh, went through uh, Zaca Mesa and were winemakers there at one time. So, uh, you know, we've had Ken Brown in the store. We've had him uh, at tastings many times in the past. Like I said, we've uh, done a lot of events with Byron through the years. But they went through some hard times. They did go through bankruptcy. and Actually, uh, they were owned by Mondavi. Uh, Mondavi went in as partners with them in the 90s and then... Uh, unfortunately, when Constellation took them over in 2004, they didn't want the brand. Constellation said, sell off Byron and Arrowwood, they sold off. And the company that bought them ended up going bank, uh, bankrupt. And Jonathan was telling us how the bank was calling him, the winemaker, and saying, what the hell's going on over there? You know, because they're worried about getting paid, making sure they weren't driving away with cases of wine. And um, uh, luckily, the Jackson family bought this winery a few years back. And, you know, the Jackson family, everything they do is vineyard-based, so we knew when that happened that Byron was going to be back very soon. And they are back. All the wines on this evening were excellent. And I'll tell you, the entry-level wines, now under screw cap, which we love to see the screw cap, um, the most consistent way to bottle wine. I don't care if it's cheap or, you know, if it's expensive wine, it's going to last longer, be less oxidative in a screw cap. And what does that mean? More fruit. That's the reason why people drink wine, usually, because it's that fruity taste it's got. Unless you like dirt, and then you have to wait a long wine for a long time for wine to taste like dirt. But uh, this stuff, uh, very well balanced. You know, the Chardonnays and Pinot Noirs from Southern California have got uh, a... It's the only area in California where the mountain ranges run east to west. So it's actually cooler than it is in Napa and Sonoma, which give the wines wonderful freshness and very Burgundian characters, although I have to say the Santa Barbara Chardonnay, typical California Chardonnay, the 2013, featuring a lot of ripe tropical fruit on the nose, peaches, red apples, lemon blossom floral notes, bright red apple on the palate here, a little nice freshness on the finish, a little touch of honey there, very good juice at $15. Wow smoking little value. The Santa Maria Chardonnay, this wine's a little different, 100% barrel fermented, 100% malolactic, so they get some additional layers of complexity in that, and uh, some surly aging also, native yeast on all of the wines, and uh, this gives the wine a little extra depth, I think, and uh, rounds it out a little bit more on the palate. This wine's got a nice nose of lemon, citrus, green apple, figs, notes of vanilla beans, some nutmeg spice showing up, smooth and creamy on the tongue with a solid core of that fruit from the nose, and tongue tingly mineral Morality showing on the finish. Excellent juice at $22.50. Uh, another really great buy. Then the Chardonnay Nielsen Vineyard. This is the oldest Chardonnay vineyard in this part of California. Planted in 1964. The original block was an incredible richness on the nose. This wine's got reminiscent to me of a Premier Cru or Grand Cru Burgundy. It has that lovely flinty minerality to it. Uh, notes of wet stone, uh, some vanilla spice, and nutmeg, cinnamon. Really complex and lovely texture in this wine on the palate. Really rich and creamy and a long layered finish. Most excellent juice. And this wine's just like 30 bucks. Wow. Uh, the Santa Maria Pinot up next. We had Santa uh, Santa Barbara, sorry, Santa Maria, and then Nielsen Monument Hill. So four different Pinots. And to me, the Santa Barbara wines, really nice, forward, and seductive wines. Very fresh, very fruity, pretty wines. Nice floral notes to the, to the Pinot here, that cherry fruit. Uh, but really easy, soft wines, both the Chardonnay and the Pinot. Uh, really short but pleasant finish. The Santa Maria Pinot up next. This wine showing a little bit more spice to it, a little bit more earthy notes, but still some nice dark cherry fruit. Hint of smoke there also. So nice structure on the palate, velvety, silky tannins, a solid core, that dark berry fruit, exotic spices, and that uh, distinct minerality to the wines from this region, the Santa Maria Valley. 25 25 for that one. Excellent juice. And then the Nielsen, this wine, ah, another level, man. Both of these wines, the Monument and the Nielsen, just uh, three or four notches up in terms of richness, concentration, and uh, lovely darker berry fruit, plum and blueberry even coming out in this, and a really nice complement of spice, clove, cinnamon, floral notes, violet smoke, really big and well endowed on the palate. This wine's got a huge amount of fruit, that brown spice showing on the finish. 
Uh, some tannins coming through in this wine too. This wine needs a little bit of time, 2012. Still a baby, but most excellent juice in 33.75. Wow. You know, this has been in our gift box as the best Pinot Noir from California several times. And you forget how good it is if you have not tasted it in a while. And let me tell you, wow, most excellent. You know, the Monument Hill was really good also. And a couple people made comments that uh, it's better, but it's not twice as good. And it's twice the price, but hey, it's better. You know, some people want better. Usually better is more expensive. In this case, seventy-three fifty, and you know this one to me. It's from the Paramount, the top blocks from Nielsen, and uh, on the Santa Maria bench. And this is, you know, uh, like Jonathan was saying, you know, this is a wine I make for me. This is a trophy wine that I think is the best, you know, possible Pinot Noir we can make every year. This wine is, I don't want to say like the Nielsen Times too, but definitely a little bigger in style, more dark spice, some leather, a host of the floral nuance, dark raspberry fruit, really well endowed. Big and spicy wine on the tongue and a longer finish and just a little richer fruit, a little more concentrated here. Most excellent juice as well. All the wines, outstanding. Thanks to Jonathan again for coming down to drink with us here in South Florida. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.